All right. Hey, um, I, I, um, I did a, uh, got an LLC from you a couple of years ago. I, I haven't done anything with it. Um, I'm in the middle of buying a, uh, a chiropractor office and uh, they, they want to go through the SBA and they're asking for tax returns. Yeah. Um, I don't do tax returns, but the banks are wanting to contact the IRS and to verify or not. Yeah. Banks want to contact the IRS to verify. Yeah. Any, any way to get around that. What you do is you can give them completed tax returns, whether or not you filed just a completed tax returns yeah. and on the signature line, just write file copy. And yeah, no, that's, that's what I did, but then you did that. They said, yeah. But okay. Then so they, they want to so, verify though. So then ask them in a written letter, what is, what role do you have in confirming whether or not I filed tax returns? And how is that part of the underwriting process? Yeah. Because for all you know, I have a different schedule than most people. Maybe I don't file every year. Maybe I file every three years. It's not your damn business. So explain to me how that's part of the underwriting process. That's all. I mean, I can't, I can't think of any other way. And accessing, if they want access to your tax records, and you've already given them your tax returns, and they want yeah. access, they want to verify what the IRS say, you don't get to do that. I have a right to privacy. It's under 26 USC 6103, and I'm not required to waive my right to privacy so that I can qualify for a loan. That was USC 26 what? Uh, 26 USC 6103. This is regarding your tax records and disclosing it to third parties. So you have rights to keep those records within yourself, between yourself and the IRS. The bank doesn't have a right to get them except what you're willing to waive. And it's reasonable to give them a copy of a tax return even mm -hmm. though it shows file copy on there and not give them access under the, like, for example, the transcript request form, the 4506T, don't give them that because they can go pull your records. You're waiving your rights under 6103, and I would argue that you're not required to waive your rights to privacy just for underwriting purposes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're breaking any laws in doing that, but that's that's what I would tell them. Nice. That helps. Yeah. So as far as like setting up a business, I, I know you said in the past that to have uh, two businesses or two LLCs, one for the main company and then one for the, the money. Sometimes, sometimes. Would it depends on what. Uh, it depends on what his liability is, but yeah, uh, a lot of times for a doctor's office, he's going to have an S corp, and so he keeps the S corp, and I do an LLC as a holding company. So yeah, two companies, one files, one doesn't. Uh, I just talked to a contractor today and I, I suggested he do the same thing only because he had, there's a propensity for his customer, the type of customer he builds for to sue him. It's a way they rich people get negotiate. They negotiate better deals. So anyways, so I said, you need two companies, one to run your, your manager operations and money. And the other one to just simply be that company that that rich guy sues. It's just a piece of paper and he gets nothing and you don't have to defend it because he's just suing a piece of paper. And it doesn't drag your brand into court. So yeah, in those cases, I would do two companies. I did that also for the people with, with the marijuana products. I separated the money from the business. So that way, if their their business was raided by the whoever, the, the cash flow is still intact and they can still continue operations with little interruption. So, so set up an S Corp and then do an LLC as a holding company. Well, it's, if you already have an S Corp, I don't like to recommend S Corps for most yeah, well, of my clients. I don't, I don't have an S Corp, I, I have an LLC. You could do two LLCs that don't file. Yeah. You could do one that files, one that doesn't. You could do an S Corp LLC. But I, what I'm doing is I'm separating the risk away from the core company. So what's that risk? Well, if it's a risk of being sued, okay, I'm going to put over here. If it's a risk where my company has a lot of vehicles, I'm going to move those over here. And then my company with all the money and employees over here. Vehicles way over here. Okay. So, so, so can, yeah. I, can, can I copy my, my uh, old operating agree agreement to the new LLCs? Yeah, yeah. Make your articles the way you need to, and you can just start your new company with the same old operating agreement and then modify as you need to. Okay. 